What do you make of the battle of words between Senator Rand Paul and Dr. Anthony Fauci over this particular point? I don't want to talk about specific members of Congress, but I will say it's really unfortunate that Tony Fauci, who is the epitome of a dedicated public servant, has now somehow been targeted uh, for political reasons as somebody that certain figures are trying to discredit, perhaps to try to distract from their own failings. This never should have happened. Here's a person who's dedicated his whole life uh, to trying to prevent illnesses from infectious diseases, uh, including HIV in the 1980s and 90s, and now probably the most knowledgeable infectious disease physician in the world, and also a really good communicator, is out there telling the truth about where we are with SARS-CoV-2 to certain political figures who don't want to hear it and who are therefore determined to discredit him. And that is disgraceful. So with politicians, they often play games with black and white. They try to sort of uh, use uh, the gray areas of science and then paint their own picture. But I have a question about the gray areas of science. So like you mentioned, gain of function is a term that has very specific scientific meaning, but it also has a more general term. And it, it's very possible to argue that the, uh, not to argue, not the way politicians argue, but just as human beings and scientists, that there was a gain of function achieved at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but it didn't cross a threshold. I mean, there's a, it's, it's a, it, but it, it could have too. So, so here's the thing, when you do these kinds of experiments, unexpected results may be achieved and that's the gray area of science. You're, you're taking risks with such experiments. And I am very uncomfortable that we can't discuss the uncertainty in the gray area of this. Oh, I'm comfortable discussing the gray area. What I'm uncomfortable with is people deciding to define for themselves what that threshold is based on sort of some political argument. The threshold was very explicitly laid out. Mm -hmm. Everybody agreed to that uh, in, in the basis of this three years of deliberation. So that's what it is. If that threshold needs to be reconsidered, let's reconsider it. But let's not try to take an experiment that's already been done and decide that the threshold isn't what it was, because well, that, that really is doing a disservice to the whole process. I wish there was a discussion, even to, in response to uh, Rand Paul. I know, I know we're not talking about specific senators, but just that particular case, I'm saying stuff here. I wish there was an opportunity to talk about, given the current threshold, this is not gain of function, but maybe we need to reconsider the threshold and have an actual, that's an opportunity for a discussion about the ethics of gain of function. You said that there was three studies that passed that threshold with influenza. That's a fascinating human question, scientific question about ethics, because you're playing, like you said, there's, uh, there's pros and cons. You're taking risks here to prevent horribly destructive viruses in the future, but you also are risking creating such viruses in the future. With nuclear weapons and nuclear energy, you are, uh, nuclear energy promises a lot of positive effects, and yet you're taking risks here. With uh, mutually assured destruction, uh, nations possessing nuclear weapons. Oh my. You're a, a lot <laughs> I of hope people, we're not going there. Well, we're not, but w a lot of people argue that that's the reason we've, pre nuclear weapons is the reason we've prevented world wars, and yet they also have the risk of starting world wars. And this is what we have to be honest about with the, with the benefits and risks of science, that you have to make that calculation of what are the pros and what are the cons. I'm totally with you, but I wanna reassure you, Lex, that this is not an issue that's been ignored. Yes, <laughs> that this issue about the kind of gain of function that might result in a serious human pathogen has been front and center uh, in many deliberations for a decade or more, involved a lot of my time along the way, by the way, and has been discussed publicly on multiple occasions, including two major meetings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, getting input from everybody and ultimately arriving at our current framework. Now, we actually... Back in January of 2020, just before COVID-19 changed everything, had planned and even charged that same National uh, uh, Science Advisory Bi Board on Biosecurity to reconvene and look 
at the current framework and say, do we have it right? Let's look at the experience over those three years and say, is the threshold too easy, too hard? Do we need to reconsider it? Let's look at the experience. COVID came along. The members of the board said, please, we're all infectious disease experts. We don't have time for this right now. <laughs> but I think the time is right to do this. I'm totally supportive of that. And that should be just as public a discussion as you can imagine about what are the benefits and the risks. And if somebody decided, uh, ultimately, uh, this came together and said, we just shouldn't be doing these experiments under any circumstances, if that was the conclusion, well, that would be the conclusion. But it hasn't been so far. 